Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another one of these Corona for Cinema 3D physical material tutorials. What we'll be doing in this one is we'll be creating our very first plant leaf material, which means we're going to be playing around with that translucency option in this one. Okay, so it's going to be a fun one. And the hero object for us here is going to be this plant that you see in front of us here. Uh, we already have created a basic default Corona physical material. We've applied it to the leaves. And so, yeah, that's the task at hand. So let's just get straight to it, shall we? All right. So as we said, probably a countless number of times by now, step number one, or whenever you're creating a new Corona physical material is to go under the general menu here and make sure that your metalness mode in here is set correctly. So we're creating a plant leaf material, which is a non-metal material. So we want the metalness mode here to be set to non metal. And as you can see, it already is. So step number one, complete. Now for step number two, what we'll be doing is, is we'll be introducing some color to our material by plugging in diffuse maps into it. Okay. So we're going to be plugging them into this base layers texture slot here. And this is all sort of standard material creation stuff here. We have a couple of diffuse maps prepared here. And as you can see, we have two of them. Now, why two? Well, with plants, especially with plant leaves, it's always good to have some variation. Okay, so we're going to be using two different plant leaves here for this one. And we're going to be applying them uh, to our material with the help of the Corona multi shader. Okay, so this is a really useful shader. And if you're not familiar with it, well, then we have a YouTube tutorial uh, already up where you can sort of uh, learn what the multi shader is and how it works. It's a really useful shader. And we would definitely encourage you to, to have a to have a look at that tutorial if you don't know how the multi shader works. Now for our tutorial here, what we need to do with the multi shader now that we've brought it in, we need to lower the layer count here to two because we'll be using two different bitmaps. And then we'll also want to play with the distribution mode because by default it's set to objects, but we do want it to be set to mesh element. Now, why mesh element? Well, if we take a look at our, um, our plant model here, you're going to see that the leaves are actually split into different mesh elements, into different polygon groups. Okay. So if we double click on them, you can see that each and every one of these leaves is its own mesh element slash polygon group, however you want to call them. Okay. So, uh, distribution mode, mesh element, layer count two, we're good to go here. All we need to do now is we need to plug in these bitmaps into the multi shader, and then we need to plug in the multi shader into the base layers texture slot. And voila, now our plant is starting to actually look like a plant, right? Which is pretty cool. Right. Okay. So that takes care of that. And, um, to continue, uh, you know, decking out this material, uh, let's bring in uh, some sort of a, a roughness map in here. Okay. Or roughness maps, if you will. Now we have a couple of prepared here, but these are actually not roughness maps. Instead, they're glossiness maps. And so if you'll remember, you know, with the new Corona physical material, it's pretty uh, easy to switch between using roughness or glossiness. All you need to do is you need to go under the advanced menu here, and locate the roughness mode parameter and just switch it to, well, whichever option you prefer, because we have glossiness maps here. We're going to be using the glossiness roughness mode by doing that. As you can see, you know, now our material is being driven by the glossiness parameter. And now we can just plug these guys into the glossiness lab. But again, we do have two maps here. And so we're going to help ourselves out again with the multi shader. So we're going to copy the one that we created earlier. So we're just going to hold down control. If you're on windows command, if you're on Mac, that's the quickest way to copy something in the Corona node material editor. And then we're just going to plug in these glossiness maps. Okay. The only thing that we're going to be paying attention to as we plug them into the multi shader is that they're being plugged in the same order as the diffuse maps were because this diffuse map up here corresponds to this glossiness map down here. And this diffuse map here corresponds to this glossiness map here. And we're going to want to plug them into the same slots in the respective multi shaders. Okay. So diffuse map a plugged into texture slot one glossiness map a again, needs to be plugged into the texture slot one. And the same holds true for this other glossiness map. So diffuse map B texture slot two, glossiness map B texture slot two. All right. Okay. Now we're just 
all we need to do is we just need to take the multi shader and plug it into the glass in a slot in our corona physical material and just by doing that we're adding some extra subtle realism to our leaves because now we're breaking up those reflections just a little bit more realistically if you will they have a little bit more detail to them if you will okay so uh to finish decking out this material you know we do want to plug in some sort of a uh, bump map bump maps into the bump slot here and we're actually going to be using normal maps here which do get plugged into the bump slot there and as you can see we have a couple of them prepared um so the procedure is going to be exactly the same we're going to copy the multi shader okay and then we're going to want to plug in the corona normal maps into the uh, multi shader but actually before we do that we do need to make sure that these normal maps you know are uh, plugged in into the corona normal map shaders all right because that's how you work with normal maps in corona you know you bring in the bitmap and then you need to plug it into the normal map normal shader if you will once you've done that you can now plug this thing directly into your material or in our case here into our multi shader here okay now because we have another uh, corona multi uh, sorry corona <laughs> we have another normal map here we're going to copy the normal map so our normal shader here and we're just going to plug this other corona normal map into it as well then plug the entire thing into the multi shader all right and now we can plug the multi shader right into the bump slot and then we just need to make sure that the bump slot itself is enabled and just by doing that you know we've decked out our material with sort of these basic maps details imperfections and all that so now our material is starting to look like something, but we're still missing one key ingredient in making this plant material, plant leaf material look, well, realistic. If we switch our uh, pass here from beauty to translucency, check this out. You know, uh, the other two plants in our scene have this nice, really nice translucent effect to them, right? And our plant, well, it really doesn't do translucency at all, as you can see, right? Now, plants are notorious for their translucency effect so whenever you have a pretty strong light source in our case the sun coming in through the window like in our case here you know shining onto our plants you know in those cases uh the light is going to sort of enter the leaf it's going to scatter inside the leaf and it's going to come out on the other side and that's going to create this really nice translucent effect that you see here and that's really sort of the key ingredient in making realistic plant uh, leaf materials okay so how do we approach this well uh, there's a couple of different ways how we could approach it but only one of them is correct <laughs> okay so um let's take a look at our uh, leaf model here first all right so let's focus on this leaf right here and immediately what you'll you'll probably be able to see is that this leaf has no internal volume okay it's just made up of these single plane polygons okay there's it's not closed off and it has no volume okay we're dealing with these really basic polygons that are making up this leaf material okay so um that means we're going to have to simulate uh thickness the thickness of our leaves because they clearly the model clearly doesn't have it now if your model did actually have the thickness okay so if your leaves had some actual volume okay some actual thickness well in that case you could resort to using subsurface scattering you would just enable it and play around with it until you get that nice subsurface scattering effect going all right but most plant leaf assets or most plants plant assets out there uh, they come with no internal volume, okay? Uh, that is because, you know, this way you can conserve on the polygon count and the complexity of the meshes, and it can really help you out when you're really trying to scatter a lot of plants in your scene or, uh, you know, um, control that polygon count if you're memory limited or something like that, okay? Because if you get... It's, it's not as apparent on this uh, plant uh, that we have here, but if you had a tree and each... Uh, leaf you know has internal volume to them that basically means you're doubling the geometry there and so you go from like 1 million polygons to 2 million polygons real quickly and that can become a bit of a nuisance so you know again 
if your um, if your plant leaves or your plants have internal volume, okay, you can use subsurface scattering. But if they don't, you'll need to simulate that internal volume, and you can do that by going under the general menu here, and you can toggle this thin shell option to on. So now what will happen is Corona will simulate the internal volume, even though there isn't one that's actually there on the model itself. So the thin shell basically simulates internal volume on meshes without geometrical thickness. Okay. And that's exactly what we need for, uh, for our, um, for our plant leaf material here, because our leaves, again, they don't have that internal volume to them. All right, cool. Well, now that we've toggled thin shell option to on, well, now we have access to the translucency parameter because before, without this thing being on, you can't turn translucency on, okay? And that is because translucency is only relevant for materials that have the thin shell parameter turned on because translucency itself is basically subsurface scattering for materials with internal volume that's simulated using the thin shell parameter. Okay. For everything else, you can use subsurface scattering, but when you're dealing with thin meshes, well, then you need to enable the thin shell mode, and then you have access to the translucency option. Okay. Now, if you toggle translucency to on, check this out. If we uh, switch our path here to translucency, well, look at that. You know, our plant is super translucent. It's actually too translucent. So now we need to rein in these parameters and adjust them accordingly. Okay. So let's focus on the fraction parameter here first. So this basically controls um, how strong the translucency effect is. At 0%, it's going to be basically disabled. At 18%, it's going to have some sort of translucency to it. Now, for plant leaf materials, typically, and this is not a hard rule, but typically, you know, the translucency fraction value sits somewhere between 10% and maybe 40%. Okay. But again, it does depend, it does depend on the specific plant you're working with. So for our plant here, we're going to go with a value of 20%. I think that could look pretty cool. Or maybe we could up it to 25% even. All right. Now you can also plug in a texture into this slot and a texture would be really useful. Um, if we would have one available, this particular asset came without a translucency fraction texture and uh, a translucency fraction texture typically looks like a black and white texture. It doesn't have to be uh, gray values are actually welcome in this case, because what you're essentially doing with this texture here is you're deciding, you know, which parts of the leaf are less translucent and which parts are more translucent. So typically these middle parts here, you know, they're a little bit thicker and they're less translucent. So we had a translucency map, you know, um, probably the rest of the, this leaf would be a little bit wider. Okay, and this middle part would probably be a little bit more grayish or darker in general. Okay, but again, uh, you know, it's not it's not a requisite to have a fraction texture. But if you do have it, you know, feel free to feel free to plug it in. Okay. Then uh, the second parameter that you'll definitely want to tweak here is the color. Okay, so with the color, what you're defining is the color of that volume itself. Okay. So to put that in a, in a easier to understand way, you're defining how the inside of the leaf looks like. Okay. Now, obviously this leaf, again, it has no volume, but we're simulating it and we're simulating it to have this color here right now. It's this gray color and that's what we're getting. Now, some of you, the eagle eyed of you amongst you will probably notice that this this color here is not completely gray. And that is because, well, we have a pretty strong sun coming from the, from the, from the outside, right? And the sun is somewhat warm. All right. And so obviously, you know, when a warm light hits your leaves, travels through them, even though the insides in this case are said to be this completely desaturated color, the leaves are going to be a little bit more warmer ish because the light itself is warmer. Okay. So, that's why these are not completely uh, gray in terms of their translucency. Okay. Because we do, you need, do need to factor in that, that sun or that light source itself as well. Okay. Okay. So, um, with the color, what you typically want to do here is you want to set it, um, well, according to how your plant looks like on the in, 
side, how your plant leaves look like on the inside. And typically plant leaves on the inside, they kind of look like they do on the outside. So they're sort of green, although typically they do come off a bit warmer still. There's sometimes a bit of that warm yellowish tint to the insides of a plant or a leaf. Now, obviously that isn't a rule. It does depend on the type of plant slash leaf you're creating. But generally speaking, a lot of plants and leaves do have insides that are kind of like the outsides. They're just a little bit warmer. So typically, if you don't have the color texture, okay, that you can plug in here, is you can make one yourself. Okay, it's not the most, uh, you know, it's not the most exact method, but it, it really does work uh, in most cases. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to bring in a new color correct shader, a new Corona color correct shader, and then we're going to plug in uh, these two diffuse maps that are plugged into the multi shader. We're going to plug this entire thing into the color correct shader, and then we're going to make this color correct shader a little bit warmer. So let's up the temperature here to say 10,000 or so. And so now is you can clearly see, you know, uh, we're, we're just making things a little bit more warmer. And now we can plug in this color correct texture into the translucency color slot. And voila, as you can see, now uh, we're simulating uh, that inside volume to have this kind of color. And so again, typically plant leaves, plants in general, you know, the insides Typically, they're very similar to how they look like on the outside, but they are typically a little bit more warmer. So if you were to cut through a leaf in the real world, okay, and then you would look at the meat that is inside the leaf, well, then that's what you're defining here with the color, with the translucency color, okay? And this is just one of a sort of easy to do methods. Uh, if you don't have any proper translucency color maps, color bitmaps that you want to plug in here, you can help yourself out with this sort of technique that we just showcased here. Okay. Now you could still fine tune these things. You know, I do think this is might be just a little bit too warm. So maybe let's drop the temperature down to 9,000. Maybe we can drop it down to 8,000 even and so on and so forth. So now it's time to be creative and play around with all of these parameters in here until you get to a result that you're happy with. If we switch back to our beauty multipath, well, check this out. You know, we've created this pretty cool looking plant leaf material here. Okay. And so hopefully now you have a bit of a basic understanding of how to create uh, your typical plant leaf materials. Okay. So that translucency is really going to be key for you. The rest of the uh, setup that we showcased here is pretty basic. You do you do input bump maps and glossiness maps and diffuse textures into pretty much all of your materials. But that translucency part is really important. And again, it's important to first recognize how your model is well modeled. If it has no internal volume, then you will need to result, sorry, resort to using the thin shell uh, mode here, which is going to unlock the translucency option for you. But on the other hand, if your leaves or your plants do have thickness, Okay, and then you can just uh, do the uh, proper subsurface scattering on them. But again, you know, it depends on the type of model that you're working with. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you've learned something new. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye, everybody.